Who is Jay Brown? If Senator Harry Reid ran a criminal syndicate, he would obviously need a consigliere to manage the funds and give himself arm's length deniability. The person who fills that position is longtime attorney friend J. H. Brown. Questions about how close J. Brown is to the mob have been around since the late 70s, when Reid was on the Gaming Commission and Brown was represented at Tropicana Hotel during the Mafia skim by Joe Augusto for the Kansas City mob. How close Brown is to Reed is given in Reed's autobiography, The Good Fight. Quote, Did I know Jay Brown? The investigators wanted to know. Jay was an old and dear friend, and our stories trace back to a time when I was in law school. Unquote. Originally from Brooklyn, Jay Brown was in school at USC when he and a friend drove up to Las Vegas during spring break. On the drive back to Vegas from Boulder Dam, Jay's friend fell asleep and crashed into a light pole. Nurses traced Brown's parents to New York City, and the senior Mr. Brown asked, are there any Jewish families in Henderson? The hospital gave him Harry's wife, Lander Reed's father's name, Earl Gould, starting the lifelong link between the Reeds and Brown. Brown recovered, graduated from USC, went to law school, and after clerking for Vegas federal judge Roger Foley, was hired by Reed's law firm as an associate. And that's where Harry first met him in person, becoming best friends and long-term business partners. So how did Jay Brown get to be so powerful? In 1974, Governor Michael O'Callaghan was looking to hire a new finance chair, someone he could trust completely. O'Callaghan was a Silver Star Korean War vet and missing a leg, so he had difficulty getting around the casinos to look for donors. O'Callaghan had also been then Lieutenant Governor Harry Reid's high school teacher, boxing coach, and mentor. At the recommendation of Reid's campaign manager, Don Williams, Reid recommended Jay Brown for the job. The job gave Brown the opportunity to make powerful contacts up and down the strip. A year after the 1974 election, Jay left Reid's law firm to work with notorious mob lawyer and future Vegas mayor, Oscar Goodman where he expanded his clientele to include casino workers, owners, and executives. Where this became a problem was that Brown and Goodman were representing some of the most murderous Chicago and Kansas City mobsters then skimming Las Vegas casinos. All at the same time, Brown was collecting political donations from the same casino owners. In 1978, then Lieutenant Governor Harry Reid loses his Senate race to Paul Laxalt, but is appointed Gaming Commission Chairman by longtime friend Governor Michael Callahan. What becomes especially troubling in the close lifelong friendship between Jay Brown and Harry Reid is that Brown also frequently represented clients in matters before the Gaming Commission, clients including Chicago mobster Lefty Rosenthal, and also as corporate attorney to the Kansas City mob back Tropicana, run by Dale Gustafson and Joe Augusto. Lefty didn't hold Brown in much esteem. Quote, I wasn't comfortable or confident in spite of the fact that I had met with a dime store attorney named Jay Brown, who was considered to be politically well-connected and an associate of my attorney, Oscar Goodman. Jay Brown assured me that above all, I would receive a p fair and impartial hearing in the unlikely event that one would be ordered." Unquote. Politically well-connected means Brown was only hired because of his connection to Gaming Commission Chairman Harry Reid, but Rosenthal wasn't the only mobster Brown represented. He also represented the Tropicana Hotel, part of the Mafia Casino skim made famous in the movie Casino. Mafioso Joe Augusto, Tropicana's Foley's Berger manager, was famously caught on FBI wiretap with Kansas City mobsters, claim claiming he had Mr. Cleanface in his pocket, referring to Harry Reid. In 1979, the Los Angeles Times reported that Brown was referenced in the wiretaps between Joe Augusto and the Kansas City mob as Old Brown Package. Quote, the affidavits say Rosenthal attempted to spread his loyalty among both crime families, which created tension. The affidavit shows an FBI analysis of how the Chicago and Kansas City outfits wrangled long distance over just who should take over Argent. One proposal agent said they overheard involved the, quote, Old Brown Package, unquote, which was alleged to involve Las Vegas attorney Jay Brown. Shortly after Glick announced his intention to sell the property, Las Vegas papers carried reports of a bid by a group of investors headed by Brown to buy it. The affidavit says that the bid was withdrawn because it failed to get the approval of the Chicago underworld, unquote. 
1979, Argent was Alan Glick's casino property group, but was controlled by mobster Lefty Rosenthal at the Stardust for the Chicago mob. So if Jay Brown had led a group trying to take over Argent, this could only have happened with mob approval. More telling is that in 1981, Brown was sanctioned by the Securities Exchange Commission, SEC, for stock manipulation in the El Dorado attempted buyout of the Tropicana, the Kansas City mob infiltrated property. These two mob orchestrated deals, Argent and Tropicana, with Jay Brown involved at the heart, are occurring as Nevada gaming chairman Harry Reid is claiming his relationship with Brown, with Brown was strictly professional. According to Reid, quote, the Browns and Reid spent a lot of time together, and we still do. Just because I was gaming commissioner did not mean that I had to dissolve my friendships, unquote. Politician Reid having Jay Brown as a friend isn't a big deal unless that friend represents mafia clients like Joe Augusto, Theo Gustafson, Lefty Rosenthal, and who knows how many others. Brown has also been heavily involved with mobbed-up titty bar owners Rick Rizzolo and Mike Gallardi, both of whom have done serious jail time, in part for political bribery. Connecting the web, Brown served as a longtime law partner to infamous mob lawyer Oscar Goodman, cross-linking Brown to politicians Reed and Goodman and the mob elite. Brown was also close to politician bribe-takers Dario Herrera and Aaron Kenny, the first person Aaron Kenny calls after being indicted for hundreds of thousands of dollars in titty bar bribes during the G-Sting scandal is none other than Jay Brown. Brown's corruption trail also leads to bribe givers like Jim Rhodes, caught by the FEC for campaign bundling to Reed. Harvey Whittemore, just out of two years in jail for bundling for Harry Reed. And in Utah, Jeremy Johnson is now serving jail time. The Johnson link to Jay Brown centers around laundering $600,000 from the payday loan industry in Utah for Czech City owner Richard Rawl, money likely siphoned to Harry Reid. We'll also find that the recent move to legalize marijuana in ne Nevada has Brown at center stage, likely as a frontsman for the Chicago mob. Reid's friends and family are involved here too. We'll have more details on Brown as the story progresses because he has served as Reed's bagman for 35 years and connects old Vegas mafia bribes with newer corruption. However, full understanding requires patience. This is an intricate swamp of racketeering.